Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in the short game to the comp video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. And we're going to start things out with AMD's Navi graphics cards, because a Sapphire PR person has done an oopsie. And by an oopsie, they've released critical details concerning AMD's upcoming GPUs. They've given pricing information, performance targets, and also the release date. So let's start things out with the particular SKUs. So there is a SKU which is targeting the RTX 2060 and an additional SKU which is targeting RTX 2070 levels of performance. The RTX 2070 level of performance has been a long-standing rumor. Uh, from what we've heard, Nav A10, which is the variant of Navi that we're going to be seeing this year for uh, desktop devices anyway, is rumoured to be targeting just RTX 2070 with RTX 2080 and above uh, left to be hit by AMD's uh, Radeon 7. So aside from that, uh, the representative also gave us critical pricing information as well. So the RTX 2060 SKU is going to cost 399 US dollars, whereas the SKU which is going to be targeting the RTX 2070 level of performance, that is going to cost 100 US dollars more. So that's going to cost you 499 bucks. I'm assuming the different AIBs are going to have different variants of the cards and maybe we're going to get some uh, good rebates from certain retailers and possibly AMD are going to bundle in a couple of games because they've done that with Radeon 7 along with Polaris GPUs for some time. But that looks to be the targeting price point which is considerably more expensive than the rumoured uh, prices that we've heard for some time. Uh, Jim at Adore TV believed that we were going to see the GPUs launch for around the 230 to 250 bucks, which was going to target RTX 2017, and I was very sceptical about that price point back then, to be honest with you, because as I said in those videos, like AMD would literally be cutting the price of Nvidia's GPUs in half. It just didn't make sense. Even if they cost them like $1 to produce an equivalent GPU, why would you sell a card that was so much cheaper than your competition? It would just be cutting into your margins. And that's not to say that I didn't expect AMD to be a little cheaper than this. I, I personally was kind of expecting around the 350 to 400 US dollars for a Nave 10 equivalent because I figured AMD would want to cut the price as much as possible, especially given the heat issues that we've apparently heard about with these cards. Whether this turns out to be true or not, who knows? Maybe the, maybe the GPUs are going to operate at like 40 degrees full load, obviously. That was extremely unlikely, but who knows because we've not actually reviewed the Narn things yet. A couple of other little nuggets of information, though, from the PR bod over at Sapphire. Firstly, there's no ray tracing in these GPUs. Unsurprising. I was told it's going to be the next generation of Narve. We're going to see ray tracing. So for us to not see hardware ray tracing in Narve 10, it's not surprising at all. There was no rumours ever that that was going to be the thing. Additionally, a 5,000 or more stream processor variant of Narve is also not happening. So once again, this just reinforces the fact that Radeon 7 will be the card that uh, AMD has to counter uh, cards such as the RTX 2080. So it's going to be really interesting to see what happens with that, whether we're going to see any price drops with Radeon 7, whether AMD are going to release like a slightly different variant, maybe with higher clock speeds or something different. Who knows? It's just going to be curious to see what AMD does on that particular GPU front. So, the pricing information then. Well, apparently we will be seeing an announcement of these cards taking place during Computex. And the release date for these GPUs is going to be, drumroll please, July the 7th. Now, if that date sounds familiar at all to you, it was actually the release date I was told by a source quite some time ago. And I was the one who actually started the rumor. You can do the, you can kind of Google back. And it was me that was actually uh, told specifically that July 7th was going to be the target release date for not only the Ryzen 3000 series uh, cards, but also AMD were targeting it for Narve. Now, obviously, if you were to look at the calendar, this does put the launch on a Sunday, which would be ne not exactly the normal date that you would see a product launch at. It would be like, why would you launch on a Sunday? But it's also 7 slash 7. 
And it makes a lot of sense because Ryzen, well, what is that being produced on? It's being produced on the 7 nanometer. Narve, what's that being produced on? So there's a lot of synergy there and apparently Lisa Su and uh, AMB themselves consider 7 to be like a lucky number and it's kind of representative of what the branding message is and I guess it's to AMD as well a lot of branding. So uh, from the information that was released by the Sapphire representative it is actually going to be July the 7th so the sources that I originally cited for that information although to be fair the sources have also provided a lot of other information, including the fact that uh, Ryzen 3000 would have PCIe 4. Uh, we're going to get into some chipset information, also some more Ryzen 3000 stuff in just a moment. Uh, and a lot of the information that, that was provided by my source has actually proven to be accurate for Ryzen. So the release date, uh, once again, is very interesting. I actually was told by another source, uh, not linked to the one told me July the 7th and this one's actually much more recently like about a week week and a half ago I'd have to dig through my emails but from memory it's certainly less than let's say 10 days they told me that it was happening at some point in July they couldn't give me more information all they knew is that Narve slash Ryzen were targeting a July release window and this also tallies up to official information that AMD themselves have released through slides so basically speaking, you are going to be saving your pinners. I'm unsure about the price and performance yet. I would always, always advise you to wait for reviews. I mean, obviously, if you're building a new computer and you just need it now, well, that's up to you. But generally speaking, I always advise people to wait for reviews because you never know if there's going to be any issues with the cards at all. I'm not saying this is going to be the case, but for example, it could be that certain numbers of Narve GPUs are defective. Like there was that whole scare with Turing uh, when it launched. There were certain RTX 2080 Ti's that were just basically dying. They weren't operating at the correct clock speed, or rather if they were running at the correct clock speed with memory, they would have errors and blah, 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 blah. So as always, when a new product launches, there's possibilities there could be faults or uh, or uh, whether that's hardware or software with early drivers or there's another possibility and that is the performance is not going to be where you expect it so personally i would wait for reviews but it's going to be really interesting to see what nvidia do to counter here uh, according to what i've been told nvidia are planning to do a, a mini counter they're not doing a full refresh it's not like they're going to be like oh well we're going to be adding in like you know an extra 5 billion CUDA cores to our particular product. I was told that almost certainly we're gonna see a 16 GBPS uh, variant of Turing, but whether that's gonna be down the entire product line or whether that's just gonna be certain SKUs, who knows? Uh, so it's gonna be really interesting to see what NVIDIA do uh, at uh, Computex. I was also told by a couple of people that there's a possibility we may, I repeat may, see the RTX 2070 Ti of an announcement um i don't know whether that's going to happen i wouldn't be surprised if nvidia do feel rather threatened and this is pure speculation this is not what a source has told me but i wouldn't be surprised if we see some price cuts in turing even if it's modest maybe like i don't know 25 or 50 bucks uh to try and bring down the price of the rtx 2070 to maybe slip, uh, slot the ti in there there is a lot of cuda cores uh, difference between the RTX 2070 and 2080. The problem is, if they bump up the number of CUDA cores uh, and increase the clock speed of the memory, it's possible that the RTX 2080 may be almost pointless to buy because there's also quite a lot of price difference between the RTX 2080 and the 2070. And there's also a lot of price difference and performance difference between the RTX 2080 and 2080 Ti. And that's actually really interesting as well. So I wonder if we're going to get like some type of, and this is once again pure speculation, I wonder if we're going to get some type of product which would fit between the 2080 and the 2080 Ti. I wouldn't be surprised if eventually that's the case. It just helps fill out the stack a little more. As in my opinion anyway, this is probably about the biggest gap we've seen between the 2080 and 2080 Ti. Even the 1080 and 1080 Ti from memory maybe i'm wrong didn't have quite this much of a gap in performance a couple of days ago i did release an exclusive that the 12 core 
engineering sample or more of a qualification sample actually to be more accurate that has been floating around to motherboard vendors is running up to five gigahertz for just a couple of threads i'm uncertain whether it is one or two processor cores so for the sake of this video i'm going to be more cautious and say it was just one cpu core or just a couple of threads but with all core frequencies it was running up to 4550 megahertz that's once again for the 12 core part and According to Jim at Adorned TV, he was also provided a little more information. According to his sources, there is actually a 16-core engineering sample that is floating around. The clock frequency for all-core turbo for this particular part is just 4.2 gigahertz. But um, from what he has been uh, fed in terms of information, it's possible that a 16-core part could run up to 5 gigahertz and run up to about four and a half gigahertz give or take 100 megahertz here or there for all core turbo frequency also in terms of cinebench results the 16 core part has a score of 4278 points and if you do the math on that uh, it looks like it's got about 10 to 12 percent ipc gains from the Ryzen 2700X, even if you factor in the additional processor cores and all that stuff, it looks like APC for this particular processor is around 10 to 12% increase, which is actually quite gargantuan. There are obviously some things you need to take into consideration when it comes to IPC information. Particularly, IPC can be drastically different between one application and another, and it really does depend on how the CPU is being uh, pegged with that particular application. Also, Cinebench scales really well with the number of processor cores it has and number of threads and that type of thing. And so that's one of the reasons that AMD do tend to use it quite frequently. That's not necessarily a criticism of AMD. It just so happens to be one application that their particular processors do extremely well in consistently. So obviously, if you're trying to have a benchmark to show your performance against a competitor, why would you not use that particular benchmark? It just makes sense, right? So anyway, uh, Jim seems to believe that we will eventually see a 16-core part, which is going to be running 5 gigahertz single thread. And honestly, that is kind of sensible, right? I mean, if you're only running a single thread workload, it's not like all the processor cores are doing a whole bunch, therefore power is less of a concern, and so on and so on. So for that particular clock frequency, for just one to two threads uh, being active, or one to two cores being active, should I say, not really a surprise. As for the clock frequency, I wouldn't be surprised if a 16 core part hits around four and a half gigahertz, maybe a little more, maybe a little less, uh, it's possible, at least in my opinion, the 12 cores with on-core turbos could be a little more um, overclocking friendly. I will be very interested to see how these processors handle different uh, situations with different levels of cooling and, you know, what type of manual tweaking there is. It's going to be really curious to see also how memory timings impact things, what clock frequencies you get with, let's say, an X370 board or an X470 board or a B350 board and whether there's any differences in clock frequencies at all and it's going to be really really interesting to do a lot of experimentation when Ryzen 3000 launches and also how much of an impact is an older chipset going to have on let's say memory frequency like the maximum achievable memory frequency so Ryzen 3000 I suspect is going to be one of those really cool things where we're going to be learning a lot about it for some time now speaking of Ryzen 3000 and the 12 core part there is also another really interesting image that I was sent on Twitter this looks like some type of chart concerning the uh, Ryzen 3000 series and with this particular chart anyway it's showing up to 12 processor cores that is zen 2 and also we could see other details such as next generation overclocking support up to uh, 48 megabytes of i'm assuming level 3 cache uh, with the memory support it's showing up to 3200 megahertz with jdec but obviously memory overclocking uh, we've actually heard multiple people who have stated 
that Ryzen 3000 can support uh, overclocking at about 5000 megahertz, but a lot of boards seem to be around the 4000 megahertz mark. So it's really interesting if this is accurate. 12 cores for launch. I've actually heard this in other places as well. A couple of sources have told me that AMD are possibly only going to launch with 12 processor cores at the start, and then maybe later on launch 16 cores uh, when they feel that maybe they need more marketing hype or possibly uh, when AMD are facing more competition from Intel or what have you. And now we're going to finish the video off with an X570 chipset diagram. Now the legitimacy of this is obviously up in the air but it looks fairly legitimate to me. It looks like a diagram that you would see in actual motherboard manual. It looks actually kind of like an MSI one although also maybe a gigabyte one but a lot more like a msi one to me anyway and first of all the user on chip hell who leaked this information also provided us another key insight and that is that the chipset itself has a tdp of 15 watts now the reason that's so critical is because x470 for example has a tdp of just five watts i do wonder if it's possible to have uh, passive cooling with just a really large heat sink uh, and obviously good airflow over the board like if you've got a pretty good fan set up in your case and you've got good airflow maybe that might be enough but a lot of the boards we've seen so far and a lot of information we've seen so far leak these boards appear to all have or at least the higher end boards all appear to have a fan uh, over the chipset to make sure they're nice and cool and this also tallies in with information that i was provided back in the day uh, the information i was told is that um cooling for the motherboard as well as vrm design and just the overall you know design of the motherboard is a lot more of importance compared to the older chipset it's uh, I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but just essentially it's been more challenging to design this. They need to be more mindful of this uh, in just general detail. And also, considering you've got PCIe 4 uh, on these particular uh, uh, motherboards as well, that's also something else that needs to be taken into consideration. But let's have a look at the actual block diagram. So for a start, with Valhalla, the SOC itself has 28 PCIe lanes which are generation 4 and there are 16 of these which are dedicated to uh, your PCI Express graphics cards but of course these will be configurable and so on so if you've got two cards running they will run at just times 8 PCIe 4 point, uh, generation 4 or if you've got a single card it will run at time 16 there are a couple there are four lanes dedicated to m.2 nvme and then there are another four of those which will be for the chipset itself clearly ryzen 3000 needs to be forwards and backwards compatible with older uh, motherboards so therefore pin compatibility is a big deal but there are a couple of differences so with valhalla there are 28 pcie lanes and they're running of course with generation 4. There are 16 of these which are dedicated to the graphics and these will be configurable. Now this means that you can have two graphics cards which will be running at times 8 or you can have a single graphics card which is running at time 16. I don't think that's going to be a really big deal um, to be honest with you having two cards running at times 8 uh, and those connect directly to the CPU and you've also got a two-channel DDR4 memory connection of, well, unsurprising, you've got uh, a 32G PPS direct connection to an M2 drive, and there's also a direct connection to uh, four USB 3.1s. With all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you did, then the normal stuff. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. You can also find us down below in social medias and other things. But with that said, take care of yourselves and hope you have an amazing day. Bye for now.